Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. Today we are shooting in 60 frames a second mate, because loads of people complain about the frame rate. But anyway, enough about that, that's boring. So today what we're going to do guys is we're going to set up a Meshtastic node at a family member's house. Now basically my sister-in-law, she lives about 7 kilometers away, something like that. And you can, I can reach her from here, but it's a little bit scratchy. The coverage is a little bit scratchy. She has to stand in her garden with the with a with a note to actually get a reception, which is still pretty good going at seven kilometers. But what I want to do is I want to get her fixed up properly so she can actually have a base station, and that way her station can contribute to the mesh properly as well. So it expand the signal out and the range of the overall mesh further. So this is a radio path study, guys, basically showing how the land lies between our two locations. So on the left, you've got my station here, which you can see I'm actually quite raised up, but not in comparison to kind of the rest of the rest of the kind of area. You can see there's multiple hills in between us. Now, my station, I'm actually running a Yagi on the top of a pole and it's up 11 meters. You can see down the bottom, it says 11 meters there. So that's been put in and you can see that's raised it up a little bit but there is this kind of peak in the middle here which is obviously a hill but it might cause a problem but this might just be an averaging of the map data there might actually be a path between us and you can see going down here you know it's pretty much line of sight but it you know we're very close to the close to the line here um, on those two sort of hills and her station I've actually put two meters because that's going to be roughly how high the antenna at her end is actually going to going to be and total distance is 7.33 kilometers away so i reckon we've got a fairly good chance of actually kind of you know getting this to work reliably so i've already mentioned for my base station setup one of the antennas i've got is a yagi and it's basically a directional antenna which kind of looks like a tv antenna if you're not familiar with this stuff but basically you angle it towards where you want the signal to basically go and you know it's not completely directional but it is quite directional probably like you know a 45 to 60 degree angle um you know so you have got some room for error but long and short of it is it's pointing her way so we're going to maximize the radiation from my setup basically going out to her direction so next up, I'm going to show you the bits and pieces I've got to set up an omnidirectional antenna system, which is going to go on my sister-in-law's shed, which is, she's super happy about. Um, <laughs> but yeah, anyway, she's been walking around with her Helltech node um, when she goes on dog walks and stuff, and she hasn't managed to get many contacts. So hopefully this is going to sort that problem out and she'll be able to make some contacts and also become part of this mesh that we've got running here, um, which is now up to, we've probably got like five or six um, individuals on our mesh here so it's super exciting how it's growing okay so these are the bits we've got so starting from the left we've got a normal tv antenna bracket which was from amazon straightforward thing nothing special about that it's just like a an l shape so we can basically mount it on a flat panel hopefully on the shed um, and then yeah it'll give you the obviously a little bit of height standoff on that pole We've got a USB power bank, nothing exciting there really. This one's quite a good one because it's got, um, you can put 21700s in there and I've got loads of those. Um, USB-C lead for powering the, the Helltech. The Helltech I've actually got um, basically just a pigtail on there and I've threaded it around through the back so it just kind of makes it a little bit, a little bit easier. Now the antenna I'm going to use is one of these ones which is basically a, an 8 dB gain. They call it, they say it's an 8 dB gain. I don't know if it really is but um, basically that's the one I'm going to use there. Uh, it comes with a mounting clamp and all the hardware and it's got a got an N type um, connection on the bottom there. Now next up, doesn't look very exciting, just looks like coax, but this is really important, guys. This is LMR400 um, coax cable, which is very, very low loss, and I've literally got about two meters of this. This is a two meter patch lead. So we're gonna be constrained to where we can kind of install stuff, um, but you don't want a long run of coax, basically, because you're gonna lose a lot of uh, signal um, in this coax. It's mainly the receive signals, because the transmitting signals are quite strong, but the receiving signals come in and are very weak, and you don't wanna lose them in the coax. So that's kind of the way I've gone with this, because I didn't wanna do a waterproof box outside. Um, but yeah, that's it. You might notice I've got a little adapter in the end here. You need one of these little adapters to attach um, to the pigtail because basically the SMA on that lead doesn't have a pin in it so if you if you kind of, kind of screwed it onto that it wouldn't make any connection. So it's a pretty simple setup you might be wondering why I'm using a USB power bank to power this thing well why not guys it's a really easy way of doing it and you haven't got to worry about batteries um, I've done other setups with with the batteries 
um, you know, connected directly to here, and it, it's it's absolutely brilliant work in that way. But these aren't particularly power efficient anyway. These um, ESP32 lower boards, the Heltec ones, they're not very power efficient. So you know, you will get through power pretty quickly. Even a little power bank like that it might only last maybe two days. So, but this setup's going to be mounted in a shed, so it's easy to go and sort of charge the battery pack or swap over the 21700 batteries in there uh, for charged ones. Now, the other thing I have got is a Nano VNA, and that is for testing SWR. Um, basically to just testing if your antenna is working okay you can sort of see any potential problems um, with a device like this you don't necessarily need it but just make sure your connections are all kind of good and there's nothing that you kind of think mm, that looks a bit shady so this is the location guys um, the shed is kind of in a garden around the back of where I'm standing, but basically, look, look at the takeoff, it's pretty good. So, I can also see my home stations from here. You can see the second one down and the third one down 123, uh, 127 RSSI. It's not very good, but the radio is in my pocket. <laughs> so, so, if I get my T Echo and just put it on the roof there, I reckon the signal will probably increase a bit. So you can see this second one down is actually the Yagi. That's increased quite a bit. So now to 116. So that would probably actually work. But we've got a much better antenna. <laughs> That's my sister-in-law's um, node, which is obviously in her house. It's just popped up as well. So this is a shed, stoke workshop, which is actually really nice. Um, it's quite new, this, actually. So I'm thinking maybe just on the corner of here, because you're going to get this sort of like takeoff out to the back. That could be ideal. And what's really good is you can kind of pop your hand over here and get inside, which is going to be perfect. So if we just do a quick test with this, we can see that I'm getting a signal here, RSSI 119 minus 119. So um, I am holding it down a bit. So I'm hoping with the other antenna it will be even better. But yeah, 119 is not bad. Right, guys, so this is what I'm thinking. I've got the antenna on this standoff mount and then just basically just stick it there. That should be absolutely perfect. Right, so I've connected up one side of the coax. I'm just going to put some of the self-amalgamating tape around there, um, basically to just weatherproof that. Right, that's that done. Let's get it back on the pole and stick it out. So guys, it's up. Look at that lovely blue sky as well. So let's give it a whirl. So I've just kind of rooted the um, the coax along here and the uh, L-Tech is kind of dangling in midair for a test as most of you guys do exactly the same sort of thing really just <laughs> got a bit of a bodge job until you kind of work it out but um maybe i'll have like a, a kind of you know moisture proof um waterproof box or something like that not that you really need it but um just to sort of you know kind of house it a bit better and then i've got the power bank up the top so let's check the mesh tastic app and see if we're making it into the mesh wow so yeah we're making it in <laughs> absolutely brilliant look at that um so thunder this is this is the this is the node basically that i've just installed t echo the one at the top is my one hartford um link is is basically um my home one there that's my home one um the omni directional one is there scholars walk is another friend that's got one now look at this look at the distances 13.8 kilometers away now so we're getting a relay all the way across the mesh that's probably going through possibly going through two stations it might be I mean, it could be going direct who knows but that is really the purpose of kind of doing um like a, a trace route so you can sort of see all of the routes that it would take to get to that point but it's a bit flaky the trace route um function it's not particularly brilliant um you know it doesn't always work and especially at kind of low rssis so yeah i don't know if that's actually really kind of working but yeah but yeah interesting and this is another station here this one is around the corner from me um that's somebody else that's kind of on just come on so we're picking them up from here as well which well possibly <laughs> i don't know they put, they might be being routed through my station actually so you can see now the mesh is basically just taking place it's it's pretty pretty interesting isn't it guys like you know if you look at if we go to our location here you'll see here that we've basically got um all this area covered now and i mean it could be going out could be going all the way around you know this area as well who knows but that's the exciting thing every time you deploy a new node you kind of 
um, you, you, it's, it's just exciting because you just don't know where you're gonna where that signal is going to be heard. So it's kind of that's the addictive thing about this. You kind of you know every time you deploy a new node, you're like, oh, I need to, need to go and do another range test now and see where that's getting. Yeah, madness. I've just sort of had to turn the um, T echo off because it was actually bridging bridging the gap between. <laughs> I was literally getting signals going straight from the T echo and not via the shed antenna, which which is kind of mad. Um, I just think the T echo has just got such a good um, receiver. I mean, it's the same chipset. Uh, it's it's the same lower chipset, but it just seems to sort of have better radio performance. I'd say possibly this might have better radio performance as it stands like this than actually that with that antenna up there, you know, in the same position. I don't know. Anyway, this is pretty cool that it's actually sleeping um, and the e-ink display is asleep, but obviously still showing that. That's cool. Right, so I've actually just plugged directly into this node in the shed here because obviously I was connected to the T-Echo before, so I was kind of going through that. So this gives you a bit of a clearer picture. So this one here is my Yagi, which is actually pointing completely the other way. I'm getting minus 128 RSSI, so that's pretty interesting. <laughs> this one here is um, is my sister-in-law's uh, radio that's inside the house at the moment. Um, so Hartford, is, this is the Yagi that's pointing towards here. So we've got a 115 signal to noise ratio here. So that is pretty strong. I would have thought I'd be able to trace route directly to that, but it seems like trace route is, is a little bit kind of buggy anyway but so just going back up the top we've got wcc base now i think that's probably it's hard to say whether that's coming directly from um whether that's coming directly or whether it's actually coming via my <coughs> other yagi this is why trace route is really handy guys but um it is it's always a little bit sort of flaky so it's actually the next day now, even though I'm wearing the same clothes, but it, I kind of shot the beginning of the video today. Anyway, the system is working really, really well. Um, I've basically got a solid link over to the sister-in-laws, so I can send and receive messages from her. Absolutely fine, 100% reliable, um, and it pretty much works every time. And obviously now she's part of the bigger mess, so she can send and receive messages to anyone on the group, and also the Long Fast public channel, where a few chats have been sort of going on um, already, which is super cool. So it's connecting everybody up. And that is a real kind of eye-opener for how this stuff works because when you start sort of thinking, oh, well, that's not going to work. You're not going to get that over there because um, basically, like, you know, the path isn't going to be good. Well, Mestastic will decide for you which path is best to take. And I've seen some incredibly bizarre trace routes happen now. So the trace routes do actually work. I shouldn't, you know, say there's anything wrong with the software. It's not so much that. I think it's more... I need to confirm this with the dev team, really. Maybe if you're one of the dev team, just, you know, stick a message below, a comment below. But basically, I think it really depends on how strong the links are and lots of factors. And I think it's more RF based rather than um, sort of software. But yeah, some of the trace routes I've seen have actually been pretty crazy. Like this one here, this is going from my T Echo, which was downstairs at home, goes up to Hartford, which is my Yagi, which is pointing towards Thundridge, obviously hitting Thundridge, which is the one we've just installed in the shed, then back to a one in Benjo. So if you know the area, then you'll know that this has gone right out of its way <laughs> to get. So we've gone pretty much eight or nine kilometers out of our way, but it's done the job and it's chosen that as the best path of the time to use. So yeah, who am I to argue? It's mind blowing really how it actually works. Um, but the good thing is obviously my sister-in-law, now she can be inside her house and she can use her Helltech and just basically wherever it is in the house, it's gonna be able to connect to the wider mesh. So. You know, it just expands. The more more nodes you've got in the area, the more it's going to find its its route through and create a mesh, a self healing mesh. It's it's pretty incredible stuff. Um, if you're interested in this sort of antenna, I'll leave the link below to it. I don't think it is the best antenna that you can get for this stuff. Uh, from my experience, the Yagi's work way better than anything else, mainly because they've got you know a bit, quite a bit of gain, and you can obviously angle them in the direction of a distant station or if you're trying to connect to a mesh further away. Um, that is probably the best way to do it. Um, there are some other omnidirectional antennas with a bit more gain. Um, those are quite good. But the main thing with the antenna is you want to be keeping your coax or your feed line as small as possible, as short as possible, should I say, with the highest quality cable that you can get. 
um, or afford for that link from the actual antenna to the node. That is the most important thing here. The other thing that I've learned from this really reinforces how good the LilyGo T Echo is as a mesh tastic radio. It's astonishingly good, actually. Um, and the more I use it, the more I'm finding that it's getting a, it's getting a signal. It's a, able to connect to meshes where other devices can't. So if you are struggling to sort of connect to a mesh or you know reach other users. Um, then that radio might solve the problem. I don't know. Ultimately, the best thing you can do is put an outdoor antenna up, um, and you know that is going to get you the best uh, best bang for the buck. The best way to do it is to have the antenna and then the actual node mounted directly below it in a waterproof box. There's no no way around it. That is just the best way to do it. Um, but the LilyGo T Echo is is a blooming good radio. Anyway, guys, a lot of information as usual. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll catch you next time. Happy meshing. Yeah.